Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video, we're actually going to be covering uh, uh, HTML semantics, insights about assistive technologies such as screen readers, and as a bonus, I'm going to show you how we can utilize an online image placeholder wherein we can put a picture on our application without having to have an actual image here in our project. So anyway, going back here, before we talk about uh, HTML semantics, because this is the part where we code, right? This involves actual HTML tags. So first, we're going to be heading over and cover at least uh, uh, four screenshots of uh, uh, assistive technologies. So we have screen readers. Normally, it is being used in tandem with a browser so that individuals who have low vision uh, such as uh, elderly people or even younger individual with some level of uh, uh, visual impairment, uh, partial blindness, or complete blindness. They would uh, rely on screen readers to be able to access digital content. So when they are browsing the internet, this is one of the ways and most common ways uh, for them to be able to navigate certain websites or web applications. To show you an additional example, we also have assistive touch and on-screen keyboards. And we also have reading assistance tools, for example, uh, open dyslexic font, right, for users with dyslexia. So there are more of them. So I just wanted to show you at least a few and our focus on the screen reader because this is something that we can do right now. And that's where the semantic HTML comes in. So this refers to using HTML tags that convey the meaning and structure of a content. So we have examples here. These are actual HTML tags that we can utilize. So we can go ahead and utilize our existing project over here. What we're going to do is we're going to convert this into a screen reader friendly or compatible website so that users with visual impairment will have a much better navigation or browsing experience in using our website. So how does this tags works? All of this still works like a normal div, like this. It's just like a div. You can format it in CSS just like a div. What we have learned on how we can format the div and the way we group elements, it's the same thing with these tags. Really, the only difference is this is more reliable to screen readers. So all we have to do instead of using div, and by the way, I'm not saying that a div is now obsolete and useless. There's always, always usage of div when it comes to web design. Div is not going away. Div is very, very useful. All right. I just want to make sure to clear that out, that div that using this doesn't mean that div is already obsolete. So anyway, so instead of a div on the header, if you know that's the header for the website where the main title or the name, perhaps the company name, the company logo, it's basically sitting inside a header. So instead of doing this, we can basically just type header over here. And of course, with the closing tag as well, that's it. So right now, if we are going to save this, it will, of course, affect our website, as you can see over here. Let me just uh, close this and right-click this again and open with Live Server. So as you can see, the, uh, the design was affected because we don't have an element now that has a class of header. What we have right now is a, an actual tag header. So therefore, you'll, you'll, you'll basically just go ahead and remove this period and save this. And we're back to the layout. So how about this navigation? So for navigation, we already have a ULLI over here. We can basically just wrap it with a nav, okay? And make sure to transfer the closing nav tag over here at the end. Now doing this, our website is now much reliable to screen readers. Comparing that if it was just wrapped with a div, right now, even if we hover over to this, as you can see, the description is now saying that the nav element represents a section of a page that links to other pages or to parts within the page. 
a section with navigation link. So uh, if we compare that with the div, we hover over to that, it says an element that has no special meaning at all, right? It, so it has no meaning when it comes to the content structure of a certain web page. Let me go ahead and delete that. But for the header and nav, the screen reader will now read them accordingly, perhaps with emphasis, right? So by doing this, we were able to make our page right now, our current project, more reliable to screen readers. And before I forget, allow me to show you a very short clip about a screen reader in action. Link skip to main content. Visited link graphic tetralogical. Main navigation landmark list with four items. Visited link about. Visited link services. Visited link news. Visited link log out of list. Main landmark heading level one below. We are tetralogical. We are a company with inclusion at its heart. We specialize in all aspects of accessibility. From working with your website stand ups to giving your teams the skills they need to make accessibility part of everything they do. All right, so that's an example of a screen reader. And uh, to continue with our work here, uh, we can go ahead, as you can see right here in this slide, we have this main. And as the name implies, that is typically the tag that we need to use if we are going to display like the main content of our page. So for example, if we have like a list of blogs over here with a preview of maybe the introduction of a blog, maybe we can have here the title, probably an H2, right? So for example, this is a story uh, one, and maybe we have a paragraph over here at the bottom. I will just type Loren times probably 70, uh, 70 words like so. And maybe uh, just like what we have here, we have a section tag, right? So we can utilize that. So we can wrap this with a section tag, uh, both of this H2 and the paragraph. And maybe after the paragraph, we have something like an anchor tag uh, for the user to read more of it, right? And right now for the href attribute, we can just leave it as a blank. And if we save this, we have something like this. So if you have another section, uh, for example, uh, we can just go ahead and copy this and paste it like so. We'll make sure that they are still within the main tag over here. Let me maximize this one for a second. So maybe I can copy all of them so I can have uh, and paste it over here so that we can have an additional two items. And all we have to do now, let me just go ahead and fix the, this indentation like so, maybe over here as well. So I am highlighting and I'm pressing on shift and then tab on the keyboard and it actually being tab backwards like so. So if we save this, we should be able to see this kind of uh, layout right now of course we can improve this in css and for the meantime let me just go ahead and update the content uh, this one is probably story two right and this one is story three and so on and so forth perhaps the story one has an image over here and we can actually go ahead and visit this website over here in fact we can just search for it so lorem uh, pick some or pick some and uh, we go to this link over here and if we scroll down a little bit they will have a link like this if we can copy that this link will give us an image like so so right now the orientation is portrait so if you want you can paste this instead of 200 by 300 you can reverse that 200 uh, by or 300 by 200, you will be able to get like a landscape orientation of a random image. And aside from that, uh, if we scroll down here, the website also teach us that if you want a specific image, like specifying an ID like this, they have that example of a link. So we can basically copy this, uh, paste it over here for now. Maybe we can have, uh, I'm just making this up, so 255. And we want this to be around uh, uh, 800 by 400. So if we press enter, and we should be able to get an image with that resolution, 800 by 400. Uh, it has an ID of 255. 
So I just random, randomly thought about that uh, based on what they have in here, 237. So there must be 231 or something like that, 240. In fact, we can actually go ahead and copy this right now and go to our project here. Let me maximize this one. Uh, or maybe I'll, I'll just put this on the side and uh, we will con when we will watch what's going to happen over here. So inside the image tag, let's paste the URL that we copied from the website. And let's start here with 241. And this one's going to be 300 by 200. And if we are going to save this, it will actually give us a random image on our site like so. So what we can do now, we can go ahead and copy this and place it here as well in the second section. I'll just make some space here, okay, so that we can visually identify uh, the separation for each section. So uh, we pasted this one. It will be an exact image here. So maybe we can change this to 242, right? And we can paste again another image tag over here with that link. And maybe this one is 243. And the last one here as well. Maybe I will update this content to story four for the title, but it doesn't really matter. So this one perhaps is 244, right? If we are going to save this now, uh, if we are going to if we are going to maximize that, as you can see, each post that we have on our page right now has its own unique image. And this is going to be very, very useful during the design process because it will not require us to look for an image, place it on our project, and copy the file name over here. So right now, we were actually able to cover all of these main points for this video. And if you wanted to continue watching, I'm going to format this just a little bit before we continue on the next tutorial. So perhaps for the section, I can go ahead and target this section over here in styles.css just below the header. Maybe I'm going to have a margin of 20 pixels and it will give us some kind of a spacing over here around it. Maybe let's make this 25 and I think that's good, right? Maybe before that, we can target its parent. The parent of the section is the main. Let's go ahead and target the main. So it's going to be here. Uh, let's just have a padding of probably 10 pixels. Save that and we have that uh, subtle uh, difference. So anyway, let's continue. All right, so let's have some spacing between this title, uh, maybe the spacing between the paragraph and the button as well. So maybe we can target first the uh, H2 inside that section, right? So section and then H2, that's uh, the way it is designed here. So section and then H2. So basically image H2 and paragraph, we should perhaps go ahead and indent all of this so that it will be obvious that they are siblings and they are within the section tag, right? So let's save that and let's target now the section and then H2 and perhaps a margin of five pixels as well and maybe 10 to have more space like so. For the margin, if you only specify one value, that is going to be the top, bottom, left, and right. So if you only want top and bottom, you can actually do this. So the first value is going to be top and bottom. And if you will add another value here, for example, zero pixels, that's going to be for the left and right. If we save this, and as you can see, there's no margin here now at the left. We were able to put this back at the left, but there is still a margin for top and bottom. Uh, we can change that to 15 to have more space like so. And if we wanted to target the paragraph, so that is also sitting or within the section tag, and this is going to be P, right? So open in curly brackets. Maybe we wanted to change the line height to around 1.5 so that we have more spacing like so. So now maybe we can go ahead and target the uh, anchor tag. So it's under section anchor tag. Maybe we don't have a text decoration. So set that to none. Maybe the font color 
is going to be white and the background color is a dark gray like so and we can have a padding of 10 pixels and now it's kind of like overlapping because as you remember an anchor tag is an inline element by default and an inline element do not respect top and bottom margin and padding so we can convert this to display inline block because a block level element respects top and bottom and aside from padding we can go ahead and add a margin top over here because we know that this one will already respect the margin we can add for example a margin of 10 pixels as well margin top and now we have a little bit more spacing and maybe the margin bottom we are we can go ahead and increase that margin bottom uh, this one is going to be 20 pixels all right so if we're going to save this and maximize our project and i think it's it's looking good right now we were able to style this just a little bit in preparation to the next uh, tutorial in the next video so perhaps the heading maybe we can change the header padding maybe around 20 pixels just to make it a little bit larger and more prominent